What's up guys, Rob from Clicks Geek. welcome back. So today I have something a little different for you guys. I'm actually gonna go through and give you three awesome, simple techniques that you can use to optimize any type of Google Ads lead generation campaign. This is um, some higher level stuff, but you can implement these right now into your processes and start maintaining your clients better, keeping them on the, on the rails, so to speak, and hitting their goals week over week with these three simple steps. And they are simply keywords, devices, and high converting keywords. And I'll go into depth into each one and exactly how you can take what I'm doing, map it out yourself and add it to your business right now to manage your Google Ads campaigns. All right, guys, let's check this out. All right, party people. So we are inside a client's Google Ads account looking at the last 30 days of data. This is actually a junk removal um, client. Uh, but that doesn't matter, right? So the niche is, is irrelevant. So essentially what we're going to do, there's three steps. So the first step is going through the search terms report, right? And that goes both ways for adding keywords that are possible opportunities and adding negative keywords that you find in the search terms report that are coming across from phrase match or broad match or whatever type of match type you're using, even so, sometimes nowadays, um, exact match. So let's uh, go right into that. So we're looking at the last 30 days of data. That's how you can, you should be doing this on a weekly basis, but for, for time's sake and a bigger sample size to, so I can show you guys, I'm going to do this 30 days, but you should be definitely doing this once a week. So if we go into keywords, search terms, right? We have all of our search terms from the last 30 days. It's only going to show us 62 of all the leads that converted, which I think were 84. So it's only going to show us, it doesn't show us the full amount, which is fine. Whatever. Let's google for you so if we scroll down let's do negatives first so what i would do i scroll down to where it stops converting over here and i'll start going into the negatives that did not convert right so here's something right away i see bed bug furniture removal chicago our junk removal guys do not want to deal with bed bugs so i would take the keyword and as a phrase match bed bug i would take that and if you're wondering why this is highlighted, so we actually had a custom keyword, negative keyword tool made. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it in the screen. We can kind of see right here, it pulls. So essentially we go like that in our search terms report and I pick keywords and I can add them as phrase match, exact match, whatever. And I can just copy my list when I'm done going through the search term report and add it as a negative list, which is really cool. So you guys probably, well, you definitely won't have access to this because we're the only ones who have it since we had it made, but. Same principle applies, doesn't matter. Take bed bug and we're gonna do it in phrase match. You can just build a list in text pad or whatever, right? So we got bed bug, what else do we got? Donate, right? So we're taking the word donate, we're gonna add that as a negative. Cause that connotation in junk means that they're not gonna, they don't wanna pay to have this picked up. They wanna donate it and have somebody come pick it up for free. So that's obviously not what we want for our client. And I should probably clear my list actually. Oh, I did, okay. So donate, and what was the first one we did, guys? Bed bug. I gotta redo that one. Just wanna make sure I picked up in there. Perfect. Bed bug, donate. All right, let's keep going. Uh, we're gonna comb through the search terms. This all looks pretty good. For junk, scrap metal could possibly be a problem, but for right now, I'm, st I'm skipping that. They do pick up old appliances. Looks good. I don't even see. Oh, calculator. I don't want calculator. 800 got junk. We're getting rid of that. And we're just going to comb through and we're going to go through every seven days. We're going to go through our search term report. And well, this one's so huge because it's 30 days, but you're going to go through it and comb through and find negative keywords out of your search terms. And by doing this week over week, it's going to whittle down what Google bad stuff that Google is showing. Your, you or your clients ads for and it's overall gonna every week over week improve performance in the campaign the more negative keywords that you're telling google you don't want to show for ever again so i think that should be good for now i mean this one's pretty dialed in like removal services that doesn't really make any sense remove all my junk makes sense but removal services i would i would add that but not as a phrase match. You know what? I would leave that alone unless you're an exact match negative it. Otherwise you run into problems. Uh, champion 
junk removal. It looks like they spelled it wrong, but I'll take that anyway. All right, so you guys get the idea. I'm not going to sit here and make you go through all these keywords with me. But you get the idea. You will go all the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom, you'll have all your negative search terms. And then what you'll do, you'll come into negative keywords. You'll take your list you built of negative keywords, which I have in the tool here. Copy all. Paste, right? We have all of our negative keywords. We're telling Google, I don't ever want my ads to be triggered if, if this word is in any type of phrase typed into Google. We add our negative keywords. So that is part one, right? Search terms. Th that's one side of it. So remember I told you there's, there's a two sides to that. So next is adding opportunities where we're not currently getting leads from. So that goes back into search terms, right? And here are all the keywords that converted. And we're going to see if they're added or not in our campaign already. These are all added. So hull furniture turned into a lead for us under the furniture removal ad group. But that's a little too broad, guys. So it's something something I would add because if this is junk removal, hull furniture could just mean they need someone to come help them move something. And you definitely don't. Let's just put it this way. If you're unsure of the intent of the keyword, do not add it. Best to just skip over it. That's the best advice I can give you. Junk hauling, junk removal, no, because we have a junk removal ad group already for that. Same with this one. Same with this one. Added, added, added. Junk removal near me. No, because it's in the Chicago ad group. Removal French near me. No. So you could put this keyword. Let me clear my list first. Actually, we'll just do it this way, because since you guys can, don't have this tool, it'll be easier to show you. Right? So where did it go? <clears throat> Chicago furniture removal. No, because that's not junk, so I wouldn't do that. Removal of furniture near me, right? So I would take that keyword and we're going to add it. And we're going to put it not in this ad group, though. So I'm going to copy that. And we're going to go into our furniture removal ad group. Under search keywords. Used to be able to just put it in the ad group from there. I guess you can't even do that anymore. I'm going to exact match add it, right? Now you can either build a list of this or just do it one at a time. It's really up to you. I don't add keywords often. Maybe once every 30 days, I'll go through the search terms and add stuff I find. So it's really use your discretion when you're doing that. It's up to you. So if we go back out to the campaign level in our search terms again, now we've added that keyword into the correct ad group, which is furniture removal. So, you know, honestly, I don't know if that's something I would, I would, I don't know if the intent behind that's great. So I'm not sure if that's something I would normally add. I'm just trying to show you, give you guys examples, right? But um, removal of furniture near me, that could be someone who just wants to have someone come pick up their furniture. They don't necessarily, it's not junk. They don't want to pay to have it removed. So the intent is a little iffy there, but you guys get the idea of the example I'm trying to do here. So that, just keep that in mind. All right, now let's keep going. So Chicago furniture removal, no. Remove old appliance, it's another one. The intent, I don't know if that's junk, right? So, you know, I don't know. So I'm not gonna skip that. Junk removal services, that's already added. Junk hauler, no, it doesn't go into the junk hauler ad group. So we can take that one, this is a good example, right? If we're not already going after it. Junk hauler, let me find our junk hauling ad group. Search keywords, exact match, junk caller. All right, so we're adding a keyword that converted for us just in a different ad group, right, into the correct ad group, junk calling, because it's junk caller keyword. So you're kind of just going to go through your search terms. I, like I said, once every 30 days, I'll add a couple keywords in to expand uh, the, the uh, keywords that are converting. It's really up to you how, how in-depth you want to go with this. I mean, you can go through it. There's several more I could probably add in here. But the best advice I can give you is if the intent, if you're unsure of it, then just skip over it. So if we come try to find one more for you guys. Scrap metal pickup, I would skip that. Junk removal near me. We already have that in the junk removal ad group. Get my junk. Too broad. Apartment junk removal. That should be under the junk removal ad group. 
So that's it for now, right? So you want to go through, you want to find a couple gold nuggets that turn into leads that you're not currently bidding on and add them to the correct ad groups, right? So that's that's what you're going to do. So that is step one, search term report. You're going to find your negatives. You're going to add them as negative keywords every week, week over week. Every 14 to 30 days, you want to go through a search term report and add keywords that are converting for you that you're not currently um, going after or bidding on. Whatever, just make sure you put them in the correct ad groups. Otherwise, don't put them in the ad groups Google suggests, like I showed you guys before, right? Like, where was a good example? So junk removal near me, this keyword showed up in the junk hauling ad group. Now you don't wanna do that. So if I went to add as a keyword, I have my keyword here, and I it's not letting me change the ad group to put the keyword in. And I don't want that keyword to go in this ad group because it's not a junk hauling keyword. It's a junk removal. So that has to go into the junk removal ad group. Now, if this said junk hauling near me, and I'm not currently bidding on it, then yeah, I would add it into the junk hauling ad group. So just keep that in mind. Really important. People get confused. Sorry if that was confusing, but I'm trying to trying to just get it out of my head and give it to you guys. So that is part one, how to optimize with your search term report. Now, step two, devices. This is overlooked by a lot of people, right? So you have tablets, computers, and cell phones. Now, Everything's different, right? Every market's a little different based on what I've seen. So sometimes tablets, pretty much, I always negative 100%. So I'm turning, by negative 100%ing the bid adjustment here, I'm turning off tablet traffic. I don't even want my clients' ads showing on tablets. They either convert horribly or too expensively, or there's just, it just doesn't work at all. So we don't even bother with them. We always turn them off across the board. Computers, we usually downbid. Computers, um, I've seen it work really well, but for our purposes, we're trying to drive phone calls. We want really want cell phone traffic. So you can see here we downbid on uh, computer traffic and even on mobile too to get our CPL a little lower. But we can see our stats here. So we've gotten 41 clicks from computers and 206 from cell phones. So you want to optimize your, your device bids, right? You want to come in here and let the data paint the picture for you. Now, this is hard to do right now because you guys already see I'm running at a negative bid adjustment for these two. But the point was I got to computer traffic before this was converting at, right now it's $30. It was like in the 60s, right? So I put a negative 20% bid adjustment on that and I dropped that CPL down to 30 bucks. And that, that drags down the overall, the average cost per lead into the low 40s, which is right where I want to be for junk right? Between 40 and 45. So that's super ideal. Now, I didn't just come out of the gate and drop this 20%, right? One week I did 5%. Next week I did 10%. And I found that sweet spot where I was still getting volume of leads, decent leads, but I didn't, you know, I didn't, cr I didn't crush the traffic, right? So I, you got to do it in increments. I usually do it in fives. You can do it in threes. It doesn't really matter. Just uh, don't overdo it because you'll crush the traffic source. You just want to get that CPL down enough so that it can drag the rest of your CPLs down um, campaign wide. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. Now, mobile phones, normally I wouldn't even have a bit adjustment on here, even negative, because it's I, honestly my target's 50 for this campaign. So I'm at 47. So I probably wouldn't really mess with that. But um, I just put a negative five on it just to drag it down a little bit. But I'm just going to delete that because there's no reason to even have that there. So that's uh, number two is devices. Look at your devices. Look where the traffic's coming from, right? And act accordingly. You know, if if cell phones are converting at 33% and desktops, well, desktops are actually converting better, but that's because I have a negative thing on there. But whatever's converting better, funnel the traffic towards that, right? So I might look at this data. I'm like, all right, well, 34%, 33%. Well, let's just take this down a notch, right? I'll go down to 15. And we'll see if we get more leads out of that and the cost really doesn't go up a little bit. So you, you have levers here that you can play with, right? So it's really important that you guys make sure you're looking at devices because I've seen campaigns where, desk, especially in HVAC and plumbing stuff, where desktop computer leads are, you know, $400 and cell phone leads are 100 or 90. So you got to dial down the traffic up and down based on what's working for you in that market. It's every market's different, but just keep that in mind. Keep this in your toolkit as an optimizer that you can look at this this device the devices and make adjustments there. So the next thing I would go into is honestly just high CPL keywords, right? And you need a big data set for this, guys. Not just 30 days. I, I would even go farther. I would do 60. So let's just do August 1st to October 1st.
So let's check that out and we'll go into our keywords, search keywords. And you see here, I've already done that. So essentially what we're looking for, we sort by highest cost per conversion. Now what's our target, right? We want to get leads for this client at 50 bucks. All right, well this keyword drove a lead for 153. Pause it. Too high. This one drove one for 100. I'm going to pause that. Too high. This one drove it three leads for 104, right? That's too high. Even it doesn't matter about losing the lead volume. That's fine. We'll make up for that. But the this these are dragging the cost per lead up across the whole campaign because they're such high CPLs. 95, I'm going to pause that. I would leave 82 for this because 82 will blend with all the lower ones and it'll still drag it way, way down. So that's as high as I would go. But all the really high CPL stuff, I'm going to come in and I'm going to pause those out. Now, people always get concerned like, oh, yeah, but I'm losing lead volume. Yeah, but in the grand scheme of things, you've lost four, five, six, seven, seven leads. But the combined total cost per lead of that is ridiculous. It's like $120. That just drags up your overall CPL across the board. Pause it. Get rid of it. It's not. It's too high. It's, it doesn't make sense. So people get they get too hung up on that. But you have to go in and let the let the data decide. Don't do it based on emotion. Let look at the data. All right, one hundred fifty three dollars lead in Yelp removal is friggin' insane. I cannot continue to have that keep happening. Whether that's one lead, two leads, three leads, it doesn't matter. It's too expensive, and that's affecting the whole rest of the campaign. Right? We want that sweet spot, that forty dollar to forty five dollar lead, and I can't do that if we're getting leads at 100 150 104 so you want to make sure you go through your keywords do it every 60 days and look for the even every 30 is fine and look for the high cpl stuff because you want to turn that off really important guys most people overlook that so these are these are just three quick little things there's obviously a lot more you can do but these are quick little things that you guys can do to go into a campaign right off the bat and start making cuts and adjustments and get that lead volume pumped up and drop the cost per lead. Very simple stuff. If you guys have any questions about how we do this or how our team does this, drop them in the comment section below this video. Other than that, I will catch you guys in the next video tomorrow.